What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we're back here once again with my thoughts and opinions video on Crown Jewel for this year. Just finished up the live with the homie dub. Shout out to everyone that was in the live stream reactions on our main page. You guys showed up and showed out. Thank you to everyone that was there for the live stream. We had a great time for Crown Jewel, aka Crown Royal. That's what we like to call it on the In the Clutch page. But now that that's over, I'm here for, I mean, you guys are here for my thoughts and opinions on the overall show. And we're going to break this down match by match, go into it. And uh, I'm going to talk about. You know what i thought of the matches and where do i think they're taking on these feuds going on into the future so without ado let's get right into it start with the very first match which i was very surprised to see but it makes sense because brock lesnar was trying to get the hell up out of there bobby lashley versus brock lesnar now the way this match started was fantastic i enjoyed it bobby came out there with no time to waste he went in straight for the early gulag sin. He was trying to put Brock Lesnar in. Well, he was trying to send him to the gulags very early. He was giving him the beats. He wasn't wasting no time. I appreciated that. Uh, the Saudi crowd definitely was not feeling like that. In this match, Brock Lesnar definitely came off more like a baby face. And Bobby Lashley was more of a heel. But it was still enjoyable just to see Bobby Lashley really be dominant. He was dominant from the get-go with the the brawl and spearing brock uh lesnar multiple times spearing him through the barricade throwing them knee first into the steel steps he was handing out the beats of course brock lesnar then started to get some more offense obviously with the traditional suplexes and stuff like that the f5 setup but the story was obviously brock lesnar's knee being hurt because of the steel steps and um him uh bobby lashley trying to apply his uh, submission move he was trying to apply it he couldn't fully get it in and at one point he was able to get it in you thought brock was fading he didn't end up fading he ended up doing kind of i guess you could say outsmarting bobby lashley by using leverage to uh using the turnbuckle as leverage to push back and then, you know, now he has, Bobby Lashley has this hold applied, but his back is on the mat. The ref counts to one, two, three. It was a weird way to end the match. Um, I wasn't a big fan of the ending because I thought the ending was very anticlimactic, but I get why they did it. Um, they obviously are trying to set up another match in. Brock Lesnar wins, not on a situation of he won because he beat the crap out of him. He won just by outsmarting him. So both guys still somewhat look strong in this situation. And then afterwards, Bobby Lashley proceeds to send Brock Lesnar to the Gulags, which was a beautiful moment. He ended up applying his uh, submission finisher on him, and he just pretty much made him pass out. It was great. We're going to see them go at it one more time. The question is, which pay-per-view or PLE it will be at? I'm not sure. Maybe it will be at Survivor Series. But... They will have one more match to see who's going to win this feud. This was kind of just more or less a way to give Brock Lesnar the win and to get him out of there because his match didn't take long. He was in and out and he was gone. So uh, overall, the match could have been a lot better, but I did like the fact that Bobby Lashley did get a lot of offense in and looked pretty strong. So it'll be interesting to see what they do going forward because this feud is not over. All right, we have the next match, Alexa, Bli Alexa, Alexa Bliss and Asuka versus Dakota Kai and EO Sky. Now, before Alexa Bliss even went out to the ring, there's an interview. She's doing a backstage interview with Asuka. They're interviewing her. She's talking. All of a sudden, Bray Wyatt's new logo pops up on the TV for like one to two seconds, and then it clicks back to the Crown Jewel logo. And she looks, she's in mid-conversation, she looks at it, she stops, and then she goes back to talking. And the crowd definitely popped for that, I popped for that, because I saw, I'm like, are they teasing Alexa Bliss getting back with Bray in some sort? Because you know they have some history. I have my reservations about that, but I trust Triple H not to overdo it if they were to do something like that. My only issue with Alexa Bliss being intertwined with Bray from the last time was the fact that she pretty much took over his gimmick. That I didn't like. I don't think that's going to happen here. I don't know if they're planting seeds, but something's happening there. But overall, outside of that, this match was pretty fun. I honestly thought 
that Alexa and Oscar was going to uh, retain, but they didn't. Uh, I, I will say uh, Alexa Bliss showed out. She had a lot of good offensive moves. They they really went with the story of Oscar being injured. They had injured her leg or whatnot. So Alexa Bliss had to carry a lot of this match, and she did pretty well. She was out there really putting in some good offense. The crowd was into it. It wasn't until the end, you think they're about to win, and all of a sudden, Nikki Cross comes out of nowhere, attacks Alexa, Alexa Bliss, and we end up with uh, with um, Dakota Kai and EL Sky winning off the distraction, and they win back the Tag Team Championships. Now, I do believe Alexa Bliss and um, um, Nikki Cross do have history with each other in the past, so I'm not sure if they're rekindling that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe they've had like some type of, like I believe they were like a team at one point. I could... I could be mistaken. I'm not sure. Or they they did they, they team up or they were cool per storyline wise. So I'm not sure where they're going with that. The only thing I'm not a big fan of is giving them the titles in the first place. You could have kept them off the show. Honestly. You could have kept them off the show. You could have gave us like a United States Championship match instead of this. Because you giving them the titles only for six days later for them to drop the titles to said team they just beat. I don't like the flip-flopping of titles. That's why I, I only picked them to win because it just you want to make your title reigns mean something, right? So I don't know what happened there, but I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, but overall, the match was pretty enjoyable. Definitely, uh, definitely not a bad match uh, at the beginning of the show. It's just the decision making was kind of weird here. Don't know what they do with the Kodakai. EO Sky, don't know if they're gonna I don't know what happens with Alexa Bliss, obviously they're gonna start a, a feud with um, Nikki Cross or at some point, I don't know what they do with that, but that's that's the route they decided to go with next match, Drew McIntyre, Karen Cross, Steel Cage match, Pro Bowl package for this was great, I enjoyed this match, this match was fun, uh, the right person won, um um, in um, Drew McIntyre, of course, um, parent cross wife was gonna find a way to get involved, even though for me in steel cages, I don't know why people are looking at um, getting distracted by somebody outside the cage, you know what I'm saying? They can't get in, you feel me? So it was a fun match, it was a fun match. I, I think they're gonna do one more match. Obviously, Drew McIntyre was the first one to fall out the cage. If you hear Blondie in the back, uh, she's just you know, I don't know what she's doing back there, but uh, if you, uh. <laughs> She, uh, Drew was the first one to fall out the cage before um, Karen Cross was able to get out. What messed him up is Karen Cross had locked the cage. Well, Karen Cross's wife uh, had uh, locked the cage so Drew couldn't get out. So Drew just decided to climb over. And then now Karen's trying to get out. So she, now she's fidgeting with the lock to open up the cage. And I guess that's the storyline they went with. And that's how Karen, uh, Drew McIntyre won. He just fell down and was the first one to uh, uh, leave the cage. So, looking forward to seeing what they do in the future. Um, we're going to get one more match out of them. I don't know if it's going to be some type of stipulation involved. We will see. But I'm looking forward to it. And I do think at some point, Karen Cross will be the guy to win the overall feud. All right. The next one. The match that I was really looking forward to the most, Judgment Day versus the OC. One of the matches I was looking forward to the most, I really thought the OC was going to win here. I thought this is them coming back, first POV event, I'm thinking they're going to win. No. Judgment Day wins this match. Triple H is booking Judgment Day to be a really, really dominant threat here. A fantastic match very fun i love what they was doing love seeing dominic catch the beats we we all know that these matches have now focused on not just dominic anymore it's rhea ripley rhea ripley has become the x factor she is re she is really the reason why they win their matches because she gets involved and none of these guys are willing to give out the beats to her. And I love Michael Cole just going crazy on commentary saying somebody needs to kick Rhea's ass. 
I love it. Shout out to you, Michael Cole. I'm with you. We need to get some beats for Rhea. This is the storyline they've been telling for the past few matches that Rhea Ripley gets involved, which helps them win the matches. So we gotta get we gotta get an equalizer for Rhea Ripley. Hopefully that's Beth Phoenix in the future. I did see her mocking Beth Phoenix with her hairstyle today. That shit was uh also rogue and uh ultimately judgment day one they are looking still dominant as ever at some point uh um what's her name is gonna come back beth phoenix is gonna come back at some point to get her revenge and oh i can't wait but overall this was fun i enjoyed this this was another enjoyable match only because i hate the judgment day so much and like dominic and Rhea, it's just fun to see them potentially get their ass kicked and it's gonna happen and it was a good tag team match uh next we have braun Strowman and omos did i care for this match no I did not care for this match at all. Yes, I get it. They were trying to make Omos look very strong. He pretty much dominated majority of this match. And then towards the end, Braun Strowman was able to somehow overcome the odds and hit him with a running power slam for the one, two, three. That's literally what happened. Braun Strowman got dominated for 90% of this match. And then the 10% at the end, right before he didn't, he sets him up. Or power running power slam one two three this match was the low point of the show do not care for this match please let's not see this no more hopefully this is a one and done i put braun Strowman with somebody else i do not want to see this no more so there's not even much to talk about on this match all right next match the usos versus butch and rich holland man the brawling brutes for the wwe undisputed tag team championships uh, as predicted, the Usos was gonna win this. They weren't gonna lose, but the Brawling Brutes, they showed up. They gave this this was entertaining. This was just a fun, fun match with a couple near falls, high flying moves. They always put on a good match. Uh with uh well the Usos for the most part usually put on good matches, especially with Butch and Ridge Holland. Um this was great. This was enjoyable. It's it's nothing that you haven't seen before with them uh to me it's not really much to talk about other than it was just a fun tag team match you knew who was going to win um it was enjoyable it was enjoyable it's not much i can really say about that so now the match that i was hoping that was going to be good and actually ended up being pretty good bianca belair versus bailey for the raw women's championship in the last women's standing match now i must say this these ladies, they took some <laughs> some crazy spots tonight, bro. The first is Bianca coming off the top rope onto a pile of chairs. And she landing face first, chest first into them. Brutal. Looked like it hurt. Just brutal. The Bailey to Belly to Bianca onto the ramp. Pretty cool spot. Looked brutal. They were going back and forth, fighting all over the place. The kendo shots. Oh, the chair shots to uh, Bianca Belair's back. The kendo shots, they were both trading with each other. The kendo was just torn into smithereens. I don't know too much about the whole uh, the old golf cart spot. It kind of was hokey when they went down the ramp. And then Bailey was supposed to go through the table, but the table didn't break because I am the table. But ultimately, Bailey got sent through the table. Beautiful spot as well. Ladders got introduced. The KOD, KOD onto the steel chair while it was propped up. Beautiful spot. Bianca, I mean, Bailey really, <laughs> she's a champ for taking that. And then the smart thinking by Bianca to pretty much pin, put Bailey through the ladder on, in, 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 in between the ladder. Then slide her to the edge, and now she can't get out. She's stuck. She's too thick because she can't get out. <laughs> She's too thick. Someone said that in the chat. If Bailey wasn't so thick, she probably would have been able to get out. Probably so. NXT Bailey probably would have been able to squeeze on out of there, but she couldn't get out. She couldn't answer the 10 call, the 10 count. And Bianca Belair retained. Truly shocked. And not in a bad way. 
I really thought damage control just won. Bailey has to win, right? No. She lost. This is her second time going for the championship and lost. What do you do? How do you book that? They won back the gold. Damage control, but she still hasn't won it yet. Huh. What do you do? Do you book them for one more match and then she finally gets it done? Or does she go to the back of the line? I don't know. Because at this point, it's like, well, you couldn't beat her twice. Now what? Why should she fight you again? If I'm thinking from a logical standpoint, why would I fight you again? You couldn't beat me. Hell, why would damage control listen to Bailey? Wait a minute, you're supposed to be training us to, you know what I'm saying, supposed to be molding us to be the, the, the best, you know, the next superstars in the company. We have tag team gold again. You have it. You don't you don't have tag. You don't have no gold. Why should we listen to you? Don't know there. That was kind of interesting on the booking side of things. So I don't know where they go with this. So yeah, man, comment down below. Let me know. Do what do they do now? Does Bailey get one more opportunity? Or should she go to the back of the line and we go to another feud? Let me know down below. All right. So we got the Bray Wyatt segment. Obviously, Bray Wyatt's super over. Crowd loved them in Saudi. They were chanting, <laughs> we love you, all types of stuff. Welcome back. You know, and he, he, he obviously Bray getting into his cryptic stuff, you know, basically talking about how, you know what I'm saying, what it was like to have the mask and all this other stuff. And then we see Uncle Howdy pop up on the screen. And he's basically alluding like, you know you want to turn. You know you want to go to that place. Pretty much saying you know you want to go rogue. You enjoy going rogue. Don't denounce what you were before. It's going to happen. You're going to cave. You're going to give in. That's pretty much what it. I got the gist of it from. So we really will see what's going to happen here. Will we see the downfall of Bray? Well, not downfall, but more of like the, the metamorphosis of Bray Wyatt. Because I did see the segment where a, a stage production guy interrupted him in the middle of his promo segment backstage and he started to get angry and he started to get pissed and it's like we were starting to see him change but he didn't give in yet so i'm interested to see where they're taking this they're really stringing us along they're going with the slow burn here i feel like once things really hit it's climax we will kind of have a better idea of what's going to happen but overall cool little promo segment nothing that you haven't seen before in his other segments and of course the main event roman reigns versus logan paul for the undisputed wwe universal championship best best match of the night for me this was very fun logan paul is showing why he belong he deserves to be in the wwe do put on another great match for this being his third match ever in WWE in a main event he showed out he showed his athleticism he bro the dude has hops for days he's athletic as hell that buckshot lariat was beautiful as hell his fucking cross bodies look great oh man bro he, he got it he's athletic he has it bro obviously my favorite spot that he does and this time he did it with a, a camera in his hand he was showing out is the frog splash from the top of the damn ring from the top from the ring turnbuckle all the way to the uh announce table always a beautiful spot he hits that perfectly oh that would look good then to see uh his his homies get beat up by the usos was a cool moment jake paul had his own entrance, which was fucking crazy. Comes down there, uh, throw some some iffy looking punches to the Usos. They sell it. Solo comes down there. They break it up. Obviously, they want Jake Paul. They you know Jake probably doesn't want to look weak in a situation like this, and they can't let Solo look weak as well. So they that's why they brought out security. You would think they would have brought out security beforehand, but they brought it out there to protect both men. I like the fact that at one point in the match. Roman is trash talking like he does and he said there's going to be no more YouTubers coming back over here he started name dropping people he name dropped KSI he name dropped Mr. Beast I was like 
Oh, that that's pretty interesting. Will we see KSI in WWE at some point? Who fucking knows? I don't know, man. But it was just cool that he did that. And then I gotta say the the them selling this punch, like his his right his punch is deadly. They built that shit up. Even Roman Reigns was selling it when he did get hit with it. Even after the match was over, he was still selling the pain from his jaw. I, I do appreciate that, and I can. We got also have to give Roman Reigns appreciation for actually selling. He was selling for this match, and he wanted to make Logan Paul look like a million bucks, and he definitely did. So I can appreciate that. He they didn't go in and bury him. They actually made it seem like Logan Paul could do the unthinkable. You know, even with the near falls, love Logan Paul's frog splash looks so beautiful the height he gets even the top rope dive oh my god it looks like something like montez ford would do it he's just he just keeps elevating it's effortlessly the dude is athletic beyond like it's just crazy the amount of training that he does he even was trying to tune up a sweet chin music since he'd been training with hbk but it didn't work Ultimately, Roman hit him with that nice spear. That's all it took. One good spear after all the chaos and commotion when Jake Paul came down here for the one, two, three. And Roman retains as all of us expected it to be. Well, most of us expected it to be. Is this kind of the same thing you see from Roman where people interfere? Yes. Yes, it's the same thing. And I can understand people's criticism. But we all know this match was a one-off. Would have been more in, in would have been interesting for him to just win on his own? Sure. But the reason why they didn't do that because they had Jake there. So is if Jake was gonna be there, they knew, you know what I'm saying, it was gonna be some outside interference. That's just what it is. So I don't know where we go from here. Who's the next person Roman faces? We know I know we got Survivor Series next. So I think they're gonna be focusing on war games. I don't think he's gonna be defending the title there. And then we go from you know go to the next pay-per-view so i don't know but i will say this logan paul you did your thing you are three for three for great matches this was a fantastic match for you best match of the night for me in my opinion they killed it it was a good showing even though it was very predictable towards the end as you expected it was still a great showing great match and i enjoyed it personally myself so that is crown jewel 2022 man Roman Reigns ends up retaining as many of us expected in the show uh, outside of maybe one. The most surprising thing was Bianca Belair retaining. That was really the most surprising thing that happened on the show. Overall, for me, if I just rate this on a scale of 1 to 10, like I said, on the In A Clutch live stream reactions, I'm going to rate this. I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10 show. This was like an 8 out of 10 show was what was not bad. I was thoroughly entertained for the most part. Not a lot of stuff really changed. And uh, also, you know, uh, Oscar and Alexa Bliss, that was a shocking moment for them to lose as well. But for the most part, it was kind of it was it was OK. It was serviceable. 8 out of 10 show. I had fun. That main event definitely bumped it up for me so i want to ask y'all man comment down below let me know what y'all thought of the show what y'all rate the show on a scale of one to ten what was your favorite match what was your least favorite match where do you think some of these storylines are going let me know all down below man appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel we're almost at 100k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace